How all of you hope you guys are great. So one of you have told me to write a smart contract in that user can log the fund ether. And one of you are using this as their college project. So I thought let's write it down so you guys can get the benefit from it. Okay. So here I have already written the smart contract because if I'm going to write the entire smart contract, it will take time and I don't want to make the video unnecessary long. And I'm going to provide you the smart contract so you can do the experiment with this. So all I have done, I have written this entire smart contract and here you can see the entire code I have in my Remix ID. And I have followed the same old general configuration. So here I have the license and fire. I've given the name of the contract is log fund. And here I have taken the first variable, which is the address. And this one will target that who is the owner of the contract. And that's what we are doing here with the constructor. So we are using this constructor keyword. We are calling this honor and we are simply updating the honor. And we are using this payable keyword because ultimately user going to add fund into this contract. So that's why we have to make the address payable. Hope this time I'm going a little slow so you guys can understand because many of you have told me that I speak very fast. So I'll try to slow down and explain very clearly. Then what I did, I created two mapping. In the first mapping, I'm keeping the track of the fund. So who's transferring the fund into the contract with the help of their address and their amount in terms of UNT. And the second one we have is the timestamp. Okay, the address and the timestamp and that's what I have called here timestamp. The third state variable we have in the contract is the lock duration. So you can easily able to increase this number to any value. So if you allow user to lock their fund for a day or for a week, for a month or for a certain hours, you can do that. But here I'm going with two days. So this is the defined lock duration I have declare here now we have the very first function and it's called lock fund so user those who will interact with the smart contract they're going to utilize this function to lock their fund so this is the first check we are doing that whatever the value is user is providing it should be higher than the defined value so i hope that you have got the point that what we are doing here so whenever someone will call this function they have to provide the value the ether higher than the value they declare that's the first thing first check we are doing so once we pass this condition then we are simply updating the data in our mapping so we have this mapping called log fund and then we are updating the message dot sender so whoever is calling this function and we are assigning the value to that so it can match that how much ether they have transferred then we have the timestamp in that we are keeping the track of the address that when that user deposited the fund into the contract so on the base of that we can release the fund and we'll restrict them to take the fund and that's why we have used this block dot timestamp i hope this first function is clear now let's move to the second function here we have the second function which allow user to withdraw their fund so here we are making the first check this check is pretty simple you can make it more complex but i'm going with the simple analogy simple structure of the smart contract so you can understand that how it's work exactly so here what we are doing we are first taking the timestamp the current timestamp when the function is getting called and then we are trying to match that timestamp with the timestamp when the user exactly deposited the fund and we are adding the duration time we have declared so if the current timestamp is greater or equal to the, the user transfer the fund plus the duration, if it's higher than that, then this transaction will be possible. Otherwise, we'll throw this error message that please wait till the time log get over. Got clear? Now, once this condition is get fulfilled, here we are making the call. So we are using this payable keyword because we have to transfer the fund from the owner to the user. And that's what we have told here. So we have used this transfer function again. If you don't know about these variables, this function name, I made a complete tutorial on sorority programming language that how you want to write sorority smart contract, how, what these each keywords mean in the contract. So make sure to watch that. Okay. So we are transferring the fund and then we are simply deleting the data we have in the, our contract in the mapping. So that's why we have used this delete keyword. And then we are simply deleting from the mapping. And the same thing goes for the timestamp. So this is the release fund. If I come up here and here we have the withdrawal function. So this withdrawal function work in such way that only owner can able to withdraw the fund, not anyone else. So just imagine that you are building a smart contract. You are building this project and in that you are raising fund. And this contract is available for a week or for a month and that user can withdraw fund and you are collecting money from them. And at the end, you're going to simply withdraw after a certain period of time. 
so this function can only be called by the owner of the contract so right now you can see i have taken this simple approach but you can make it more complex instead of going with the simple check you can create a modifier again i'm telling you modifier is explained in our sortie complete course so make sure to check there so but for the simplicity i have gone i have taken in this way okay so first thing i'm checking that whoever is calling this function is the owner if it's not the owner then we have to throw this error message the second check we are doing that we have to check that the balance should be greater than zero because if there is no fund in the contract then it's totally useless to call this function and pay unnecessary money for this transaction because you know that when you do transaction on the blockchains on the decentralized space you have to give money so that's the check we are doing here to prevent any any loss of ether because if the contract doesn't have anything then why we have to make the transaction we have to fail the transaction and at the end we are simply transfer the fund to the owner address so this is a pretty simple contract i believe that now you have got the idea that how you have to structure so the whole the entire logic is this this part how you are calculating the timestamp how you are building the logic checking the time and restricting on the user based on their timestamp so i believe that this entire smart contract makes sense to all of you if you still have any confusion any doubt do let me know in the comment section i'll try to explain in that and the only thing the only takeaway you have to take it from this video that you have to understand that how this timestamp work and how you can build the logic around it you can take you can add more complexity into this like instead of calculating fixed two days you can add multiple slap for an hour for a week or for a month that kind of things or you can do one thing that you can allow user to withdraw their fund at any given point of time and whatever whatever times like whatever period of time they will hold their token in the contract you can reward based on that so you can add that logic as as well into the contract okay there is a tons of thing which you can do it's all about experiment and you want and the way you want to architecture your contract the kind of needs you have that's the thing you have to keep in mind so with that i'm ending this video and again i'm going to provide you this entire code so let me copy and let me show you how you can get that so what i did i created a new discord server and that i'm going to give you all the because many of you are asking me to give you the code so that's why i decided to create a new discord server and that i'm going to paste all the code of the contract which we are building okay so this is the name of the discord server the blockchain coder and inside that i'm going to give you all the code so i will simply paste the code so you guys can come and you can check from here so i'll simply hit enter and it's there so if you guys need this code if you want to do the experiment you can simply come to the discord server and again i'm going to provide this link of this discord server in the comment section so you can access from there as well so with that i'm ending this video hope you guys have liked it if you still have any confusion any doubt and if you want me to write any particular smart contract do let me know i'll try to build that with that i'm ending this have a wonderful day bye, -bye.